Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at 868-HACK, 868-HACK, it doesn't really matter, it's supposed to be a phone number, not anything necessarily more significant than that. This is a new, minimalistic, roguelite-ish game, and I'm getting so far on my own asshole with that description already, but you're gonna understand what I'm talking about pretty much as soon as we get started here. Just came out on Steam, but has been available, uh, and kind of a critic's darling on iOS devices, I think, for a while. It's from Michael Bruff? Bro, you know, thanks to the weird ambiguity of the English language, I'm not totally sure. But, uh, this is, it's five bucks USD, I think it's 565 Canadian, anyway. Turns out, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I'm realizing as I'm starting this episode, but I have played, uh, about an hour and a half, two hours of 868 hack thus far. And, uh, originally, I'm just gonna start the game, because I kinda wanna, you know, call a spade a spade here. And I think the, the first reaction that a lot of people, if they're not familiar with the game, they've never played it on iPad or watched anybody else play it, is gonna be, what the heck am I looking at? It's got kind of like a neon hideous thing type going on. Admittedly, that was my first reaction to the game as well. Pretty much, you know, it's got this like really, really brash aesthetic might be the way that I'd put it. It looks like how we thought the future of computer interfaces would look back in like 1995, basically. Maybe a little bit earlier than that. Uh, but what it actually is, is you can almost think of this, it'll help you if you conceptualize it early on here, as kind of a minimalistic... Binding of Isaac, or a minimalistic Spelunky. The game's divided up into eight sectors here. I'm not sure, oh, my mouse pointer actually does exist, which is awesome. So, um, Agent is our class. There's a few different classes you can start as. This is our player character right here, by the way, is this happy face down here. We have zero points. The goal of the game, ostensibly, is to either make it to the end of the, the sectors uh, as many times as you can, because you can keep looping around and around and around, like Nuclear Throne, for example, um, or get a, the highest score that you possibly can, which I guess is really like the true aim of the game. We also have credits and energy. Credits uh, are used to execute some programs. We are a hacker. Energy is used to execute some programs, because we are a hacker. Now, the way that we move is just via uh, uh, WASD or on keyboard here. The, the crux of the game, again, is that it's minimalistic and it, it's predictable, so it almost becomes kind of a puzzle game as well, but with roguelike elements. So I'll try to explain that as we move along. Basically, uh, the thing that just spawned here, this thing right here, if I can get my mouse back, is uh, a computer program that is trying to stop us. I believe this is a daemon. Now, if we right-click on our program here, we actually have uh, a better description. It tells us, explode nearest daemon. This is the D-bomb, the daemon bomb. Matt Damon is not a professional wrestler as far as I know, but if he ever was, that would be a great finishing move for him. So if we wanted to, we could use three of our ten dollars here, ten credits, to execute this program and explode this guy, but then it gets a little bit more complicated, so we're just gonna keep it simple for now, and I'm gonna show you the basic attack that we have. It's a turn-based game, so every time we move, enemies move, much like, you know, desktop dungeons, or, you know, Dungeons of Dreadmore, or a lot of roguelikes, of course. In fact, I guess the fact that it's truly turn-based probably makes this a little bit more traditionally roguelike than a lot of the stuff that I cover. But I don't want to step on any toes there, necessarily. Uh, so, it moved close to us. I can attack it. Because uh, there's only a few different kinds of enemies, they each have patterns that are pretty easy to tell. This enemy takes three hits to kill, but doesn't attack us while we're attacking it. If we don't attack it, then it will attack us. So we've got like a little paralysis beam here. Anyway. That's kind of the way, the basics of how attacking works. There are different kinds of enemies, there are some that will attack us as we attack them. I think, eh, maybe not, now that I think about it. So our beam is kind of like paralytic, it paralyzes enemies. Uh, much like a Finger Eleven song. So what I picked up there is called a Data Siphon. Now what the Data Siphon basically does is unlocks the Settlers of Catan style resource kind of gathering thing that we've got going on here. You can see that there are tiles. Uh, and they all have symbols on them. These symbols basically indicate the amount of resources that we have. If we press the spacebar with a data siphon, it will give us all of the resources that border the space that we're on in a cross-like pattern. So, you know, like a D-pad style. So if I press the button right now, I should get three energy from here, two energy from here, two energy from here, one credit, one credit. This will give me a ton of energy. Not very much cash, but that's okay. And you can see that worked right there. It also got rid of our data siphon. So every floor has two data siphons. So we'll get that one. This is another enemy. This one uh, is a little bit unique in that it can overlap with those uh, other tiles, those green tiles, which we can do. As you can see right here. You might be wondering what those green tiles actually represent. Well, if there is a green tile with a number... Let's put it this way. The number in the top left corner indicates the number of enemies that will spawn if we data siphon that tile. So if we data siphon right here... You can see there's a 5 right here. 
We can also show this, and this will show the, the pattern, but I prefer to play just with keyboard. Um, so if we data siphon right here, it'll give us five enemies that we have to kill. That's a lot, but, you know, we could probably make do with it, uh, especially if we had, like, a lot of daemons show up so that we could explode them, and this will do some splash damage to enemies around them, but that's a little bit of a deeper strategy. Um, not super deep. Uh, but the other thing is, the, the thing in the that is not the number in the top left corner indicates kind of the secondary thing that we get from it. So if we data siphon here, we'll get the score function. I believe the score function basically costs energy but gives you score. Well, it gives you points based on the number of sectors that you have left. So if we used it now, 8 minus 1, we would have 7 points every time we used it, which is pretty good. But I'm not worried about score, I'm more worried about survival, to be honest, because I suck at this. Um, the, if there's no, like, text, like, push is another function, step, reset, I'll probably try reset, because that's a, a very useful one, it's basically healing, uh, there is HP, but I'll talk about that as we actually get hit. Uh, if there's just another number, that's just points, so if we moved over here, for example, and just data siphoned, then I'd get two points, and I'd also spawn two enemies, but that would, it, it's better for score, so I'm gonna use my, oh, I'm gonna kill this guy first. We do have a little range on it. it. It goes all the way in one cardinal direction. Um, to all the way to the, the first obstacle or the first enemy. I'm going to use my data siphon here. It's going to give me one credit, one energy, two more credits, two more... Sorry, two more energy, two more credits. It's going to spawn five enemies, give us three points. But I'm doing it even though this is a little bit ambitious because I really want this reset function, which will give us the ability to heal ourselves, which is extremely important for survival. So we get one turn where enemies are spawning. All right, let's talk about these enemies, and then I promise we'll play a little faster, because it just took a little while to get through the, the very basics here. Once you get this, you can play it so quickly if you want to, and it makes it a lot easier to kind of understand what's going on. But for, I know it looks so impenetrable relative to a lot of other games that I wanted to talk about it and say, you know, you just make sure that people know what's going on. Um, We've already seen this enemy, takes three hits to kill, moves one tile. These enemies, we've seen them, they overlap with tiles, which can be annoying. These guys are the worst. They move two spaces or one space in attack. Everything else only moves one space. These guys move one extra space, or they have two moves per turn, basically, is the way that you can think about it. So I'm going to try to use some strategy here. Rather than just attacking right off the bat, I'm going to try to um, move in such a way that I can actually use this daemon bomb to also hurt another enemy, because it will do some splash damage, and we have one daemon right here. This is a virus. I don't know what these guys are called, to be honest with you. Anyway, let's move. And then we can use the D-bomb. I love that phrase. Uh, and it won't actually cost us a turn. None of these uh, functions here cost us a turn. So we'll use this. It blew that one up and nearly killed the virus next to us. Now we can kill the virus. And um, I'll try to get in a position. We could just go down to the next floor. But we can actually kill these guys. Uh, we are going to get hit. Oh, no, we're not. Because I... Hmm. Let me think. I think this, this, this. There we go. All right, we did get out of it. Enemies also spawn uh, periodically just over the course of a, a certain number of turns. So that's going to be the end of that. Now, we finish the sector, we get one more HP. You have three HP, you get hit once, you lose one. You go from smiley face to lined face to frowny face to you're dead. All right, so now let's play a little bit faster now that you've hopefully gotten the basics down. No matter what I do on the next turn, I'm going to get hit. If I move to the left, I'll get hit by the, uh, the overlapping thing. If I move to the right, I will get or up for that matter. I'll get hit by the uh, virus. Actually, if I move up, I'll get hit by both. So I think I gotta move this way and just accept that I'm an idiot. Now, I will get hit once on the next turn. And I have to reset here or I'll get killed. This is where you start to understand that I'm actually terrible at this game. Alright, let's pick up our uh, data siphon here. I'll talk about my overall impressions on the game as we get a little further along. I just want to make sure that, you know, kind of as you're watching it here, because the, the the purposes of this Let's Look at is not just to be like a Metacritic style thing where you go and look at it and say, oh, that game's good, I'll check it out. It's more of like, you know, see if it's your style and then, um, you know, after that I'll tell you what I actually think about it. So I'm going to use a data siphon here, even though it's a little bit not that fantastic, mostly because I'm just trying to generate resources. You know, the, the reason I describe this, you might be saying, you know, your, your description of it as a roguelike is a little bit willfully disingenuous Northern Lion. I actually don't think so. I'm gonna siphon here for a decent amount of energy. Uh, because really, the, the structure of the game is very similar to a roguelike or a roguelike-ish game. I, mean, I might even be kind of being overly cautious here. This might be like, oh, that was such a bad move. Like, easily and accurately described as a real roguelike. But anyway, quote-unquote, real roguelike. Um, Basically, you know, it's a dungeon crawler just with a different kind of aesthetic poured over top of it. 
You spend every uh, every sector trying to gather resources, and you know you can get new items basically if you want to put it in like a Binding of Isaac context. Uh, as a result of like getting these functions, and you do have to balance. This is a little different, and one of the things that makes kind of the uh, the game really really enjoyable and, and kind of different every time you play it is you have to balance getting points versus just trying to survive and get resources. Like it's easy enough to get score. Like if I just post it up like right here. Uh, maybe like here for example, and then use a data siphon. I would spawn eight enemies. I guess I'd only get three scores, so yeah, you'd be better off doing it here. I could get six score and spawn six enemies. Um, but do I really want to get as many points as possible, or is it better for me to just try to survive and get as long into the game as possible? Maybe we start trying to do some score stuff after we get more and more functions, you know? It's the kind of thing I haven't really figured out for myself. My best score ever has been like 30, and this is kind of through using a... It's not really a scam tactic, it's very viable, but like from getting a score function and then like an exchange function so exchange turns credits into energy score turns energy into score so basically I was just like picking up as many credits as possible and then converting it into score um, but that I didn't get very far on that run I just you know got a very high score so there's some weird kind of dynamics there that uh, make for a cool uh, I'm not trying to say dichotomy, but like a trade-off. You're always constantly considering, you know, is it better to use my limited number of data siphons to get resources to f to feed the functions I already have, or is it better for me to, you know, use those data siphons to get some score? I think the the crux is probably, or the the true answer is probably like a balance somewhere in the middle. Uh, I really, really like antivirus, but I don't love the fact that we're not going to get like anything else out of this. So I think I might actually save one extra data siphon for the next floor. You can see by the way that I did heal one more when I came down there. The last mechanic I'm going to talk about here, I know I've been saying that a lot, but the, the last mechanic I'm going to talk about here is um, healing. It's very simple. You know, if you don't have a reset function, you heal one HP every time you go down to the next floor. So the, again, the main goal here is not necessarily to get all the way through to Sector 8, although it's kind of a maybe an admirable goal for a new player to have like me. Um, but, uh, the main goal is to get as many points as possible. I have looped around once. Also, if you go to every sector you go down, this is the last one, I swear to God. Every sector you go down, the number of enemies that spawn as soon as you start corresponds to the number of the sector. Sector 4, we had 4 enemies spawn. So, I would love to get a, a debug function. There is not one. Uh, exchange is pretty good. So, I think I'm gonna do... Uh, exchange right here and now we have this question mark function here I don't know what this is gonna do for me and actually you know what I'm gonna come back up here first because we can get more credits this way uh, that guy's gonna be a little annoying this could be like a, a good function it could be one score or it could be seven score seven score would be awesome but it would also spawn seven enemies let's see it was one score so that's just gonna spawn one extra enemy plus the one for exchange or however expensive it was I can't remember all right, so we, we timed that appropriately. You just, you start to learn some enemy patterns um, because that's the thing is the game's entirely predictable. So it does come down to a, a puzzle game thing, and you know so things being predictable is oftentimes I feel knee jerk treated as like a negative thing, which makes no goddamn sense to me. You know, like crossword puzzles are predictable. You know, Sudoku is predictable. That's that's what that doesn't make it easy. It just makes it. Uh, it, it, it just makes it doable. Like, it makes it so you can actually do it. Uh, I'm gonna pick up one extra score here, and also, um... That's, that's gonna be a little annoying. Ah, uh, maybe not. We still have one more enemy. The thing is... Yeah, that was stupid. We're gonna heal anyway, though. Um... I wanna kill every enemy before we go down to the next floor. Oh, this is good. We can use Damon Bomb here, do a little splash damage in a cross or a diagonal pattern there, and then take these guys out. Um, you want to take out every enemy you possibly can. I'm going to just... Oh, it did kill the one that was spawning. Okay, I didn't know that. You want to take out every enemy before you finish the floor because those come down to the next sector with you, and you're already going to have, you know, this time we had five enemies spawn right in our face, so we, we don't want any more than that. So we got Exchange. Exchange allows us to turn our credits into energy, which basically means... You can kind of consider that we have nearly unlimited heals right now. By the way, this is much longer than my average run of 868 hack, which probably ends up typically being around like five minutes long because I play a lot faster. This seems like a great spot for resource generation. And um, antivirus. Antivirus is really good. And it seems like it, antivirus does damage to all enemies in an area, by the way. Um, so I'm going to do that. And it was a relatively good space for both resource generation and not dying, which I think is good. So, oh, here's the value of antivirus. It does damage to all enemies. Oh, oh, no, sorry, it does damage to all viruses. 
but uh, so there's different kinds of enemies. You know, this is a virus. I already talked about the daemons. I don't know what these ones are called necessarily, but at least that allows us to kill the viruses easily. Ooh, a little risky there. I would rather not reset if possible. Uh, it does damage us to all the viruses, uh, which is is still very good for us because they're probably my most annoying enemy. I think I'm just gonna head down to the next floor. We'll heal one. And then I still have like one kind of like leftover data siphon. This seems like a great opportunity to use D bomb and do some damage here. And then these guys are far enough away that we should be able to take them out. Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. Cool here. I'm gonna reset, which will heal us all the way back to max. Take four energy away from us. We have so much energy. It shouldn't be very difficult for us to get up to uh, sector eight and then loop back around to sector one. But actually, like completing the game is. Or the, getting a high score, I should say, is likely going to be impossible. I'm, I'm making it look, honestly, a little bit easier than it actually is for new players. For the first, like, half an hour that I played the game, the highest score I ever had was 3, and I, like, never made it past Sector 4. It's really, like, getting the high scores is the difficult part. At least early. Surviving while getting high scores is nearly impossible. What do we have here? We have a score function. It's a little late for that to be super useful, I think. The step function allows you to take a step for free. There's other functions, like, I'll, I'll show you the list, but there's other functions like wait. You know, you don't have a wait option here, but you can get one that for one energy allows you to wait a turn, which can be really useful to kind of, like, put yourself more in step with the enemies. Um, you know what, let's get the score function. We can use that if we loop back around, I think. I'm gonna Daemon Bomb a little bit here. And that's going to explode them, which is going to make my life easier. See, they got paralyzed for a turn there. This would be a great turn to have a weight on, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Yeah, that's what I was hoping there, because then I can use Daemon Bomb, blow up two enemies for the cost of one. Really, like, what the game ends up being about, for the most part, from a strategic standpoint, is, is enemy management, so that you're not facing so many enemies every single turn. I really do think, and, and this, is, this is on me, it's, it's very superficial, I still don't think that this is a particularly good looking game, but it does do a great job of actually conveying the information quickly, and it's a stylistic choice. You know, it's like if you saw someone out... It, you know what it is? Here's the perfect uh, metaphor for what this is. When I, when I was like 12, Christina Aguilera came onto the pop scene, right? And she was like this clean-cut good girl, even though she's like... You know, I'm a genie in a bottle, baby. You gotta rub me the right way. But everyone was like, oh, she's nice, you know. She's a teen. They get into that kind of stuff for anyway. But then she came out with Dirty, and everyone was like, yo, what happened to the... I'm just going to use antivirus here. Unfortunately, I misplayed that. What happened to our clean-cut American pop princess? Now we've got this, you know, Dirty Girl, and a lot of people were like, oh, she's ugly now. But she wasn't, like, genetically ugly. It was a stylistic choice. That's kind of what I feel about this. It does a good job of conveying the information, and when you look at it, you're like, well, you know... It's stylistic. It's deliberate. Let's put it that way. And I know a lot of people may disagree. Oh, I am out of siphons. I did not realize that I spent an extra one here. That's okay. Uh, I'm gonna kind of kite this guy up here and hopefully be able to kill all the enemies. Next sector is the last sector. Enemies, I think, spawn faster the later you get into the game as well. All right, let's do this. Final sector. Uh, I'm gonna take one move, and then we're gonna see. So we got a lot of viruses, not many daemons. And not that many credits. We actually would almost prefer to have exchange going in the other direction. Let's try this. Let's use antivirus. Antivirus. All the viruses are dead. We may not have to use D-bomb. I'm gonna use D-bomb. That will also paralyze this one for a turn. Alright. You're dead. You're dead. I don't think there's any way out of this without me getting hit at least once. Let's use it here. Uh, twice. And then I think we should reset. Get our HP back. All right, so we've taken care of, of the enemies that have spawned. They are gonna spawn faster than we're gonna know what to do with. I'm gonna get hit here, I think. Ah, oh, those moon-looking enemies are so tricky, man. And we have to decide, you know, what do we wanna do here? I think probably the best bet for me, best bet is maybe a little subjective. Oh man, I really wish I could just wait for a turn. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, whether or not it's the best bet, is try to pick up as much score as possible right before the end of the game. So I'm gonna pop off this, like, uh... There we go. I'm gonna pop off this 7 spot right here. That actually does take a turn, by the way. The, the siphon takes a turn. It's the only function, quote-unquote, that takes a turn. Um, 
We can't get surrounded on all sides or we'll we'll be fucked. I think we kill it. Reset. Move. Move. I think we'll be fine here. I think this won't kill us. Like, this won't move on to this space because it would end the game. So I, I'm going to use one last data siphon to get five extra points. Oh, no, it does move on. Oh, so we're dead. I basically just killed ourselves here uh, because no matter what, I'm going to get hit three times on the next turn. Well, that's one way to learn a new mechanic, I guess. So I'm just going to exchange all of my... Oh, we don't get any score for him anymore. Yeah, so I basically just blew it. Oh, no, wait, I can live. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so we made it all the way around. And, you know, that's honestly not that disrespectable of a score um, for for my play here. With that data you stole, you pay off your next six months of oxygen bills. That's all right. We unlocked a new function. Poly randomizes enemy types. We're still running. We got 18 score. The first time I beat the game or got all the way through, I uh, I seriously got zero score, literally. So you can see my, my high scores there. You know, my highest score ever is 37, getting to Sector 8. Uh, sector six, sorry, and my uh, but my highest score on the leaderboards here is the ones where I or the ones where I actually lived, I guess. So here's some of the programs that you can see. For example, wait, you know, moves the game ahead one turn basically without you moving, which can be useful. Show shows you where enemies are going to spawn. Poly randomizes enemy types. Push pushes all enemies away one tile. Uh, step gives you one step freely. Antivirus hurts all viruses. Debug hurts all bugs, I guess. Basically, if the bugs are overlapping with the space, it just explodes them, which is awesome. You saw D-bomb, you saw reset, exchange turns credits into score, or energy, sorry, turns credits into energy. Warp switches our place with an enemy, and score gives us points for sectors left. So let's do one more run quickly uh, while I actually talk about how I feel about the game. Uh, is this this, oh, this, so this is our same run? Or no, we could choose to do that run again, I guess. Um, how do I feel about the game? Honestly, the first few times I played it, I was like, I don't really know what's happening at all. There is a tutorial, and it, it tutorializes... I'm gonna use it here, I think. It tutorializes the game adequately, but I didn't really realize it the first time. Uh, my goal in the early game, usually, by the way, is to get um, a reset function as quickly as possible, because I, I need it to heal myself. Oh, I'm just probably just gonna die right here, actually. So this is a... Yeah, I'm dead. This is a more accurate assessment of... of or a more accurate uh, kind of look of how my game... My games in uh, 868 hack typically work. It's the kind of game where I think you really... I wonder what that space there means. This, like, weird... Oh, that's my mouse pointer. Never mind. I'm an idiot. Um, you kind of need to take somebody's word on it because I don't think it, it really makes the best first impression visually or with any kind of like bombastic mechanics or something like that. So for me, there were a bunch of you know game designers and stuff I respected on Twitter who have been tweeting about this game for ages because it's been out on iOS. Uh, and I was like, well, I, I look forward to playing it myself one day. And then when it came out, I played 45 minutes of it or so and was like, I don't really get it. And then it clicked. I was like, oh, you know what? This isn't like a, this isn't an arcade game, basically. This is it's a roguelite. And once I actually started to figure that out, it, it actually... Oh, that was a terrible move, but I'll heal anyway. Um, is there a reset function here? There's not really. Okay. Well, there's not at all. Not really. There's our reset function. Although it's gonna... Eh, we can get it with only two enemies spawning. That's okay. Once you kind of figure out what's going on, it is actually insanely addictive. It's surprising, surprisingly addictive. I think I've, I've sussed out, by the way, the, the key to addictiveness in games. It's first off, you know, make the game fun. Easier said than done. And then, you might as well call the genre predictable mistakes. You know, that that's what makes things so... or av avoidable mistakes. That's what I think makes a game like this, or a game like Spelunky, so addictive, is that it's like... You know, oh, I see what went wrong there. I'll, I've learned something now, I'll come back and do it again and, and try to do better. And really, I have felt my skills improving, like, on a consistent basis. It, it's the kind of thing... I, maybe I'm being a little bit too sensitive about it, but I do find myself for real... I'm gonna try to get this, um... I'm gonna try to get one extra function here. And some score. We got a wait function, that could be useful. This is gonna hurt. Yeah, it's gonna... Oh, no, we can use antivirus. That's not gonna hurt at all, actually. Hmm. There we go. Uh, am I gonna... No, I'm gonna get hit once, but that's okay, because I'll heal up when I go down to the next floor. Um, 
Yeah, maybe I'm being overly sensitive about this, but I find myself being like, no, seriously, guys, I know that, you know, on first glance, this looks like something that you can write off and is not necessarily that cool, but it actually is that cool. It's just hard to describe, hopefully a little easier to explain, especially with me playing it at the same time that I'm explaining it. I found myself, you know, I played a lot of games yesterday. It's my first day back uh, from Japan. Kate and I have been gone for like two weeks. I had a lot of games that I wanted to play. 868 Hack was not necessarily one of them. I just saw that it came out and I was like, oh, I, I should play that. You know, I, I've been looking forward to playing that for a long time. And I found myself probably playing this the most out of anything that I played yesterday, which is really the most glowing endorsement that I can give. This is my first day back. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to play some 868 Hack. Oh, I fucked myself. I am dead. No, I can reset. I can reset over. Oh, we should try to kill the one on the bottom. I think that'll give us an out. Yeah, so I use like almost all my energy resetting there, but because only the bugs overlap with the the spaces I can actually very easily yeah get out of that. That was pretty lucky uh, Oh, I don't have any data siphons. All right, let's go get those so for five bucks I absolutely think that this is worth picking up if you can get over the aesthetic or you like the aesthetic You know, it's it's a personal taste thing, I guess or maybe I'm just a neophyte um, but if, if you can get over that, I think it's totally worth picking up. A lot of the, like, $5 roguelikes that I end up playing, I, I end up disliking them, not because of aesthetics, but because of mechanics. 868 is the exact opposite, not to say that I dislike it, but 868 hack is the exact opposite. I love the mechanics, uh, I love its kind of take on the roguelike formula by making it super minimalistic, and again, I might be making myself look totally ignorant here. Maybe this is actually the most traditional roguelike I've ever played on the channel. Um, the only thing I don't really love is the aesthetics, although I do love the kind of like ambient soundtrack that's going on. Ah, oh, this, this floor is gonna hurt, I think. We're gonna get hit once. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> Reset. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna end up going through all my energy here, I think. I'll get hit twice, that will kill me. Uh, yeah, I'm dead. I just waited for a turn to finish it off. Uh, anyway, I mean, you can look at some of the global high scores here, for example. You know, there's one guy, he's got a 105 game. I think that's, uh, I guess the leaderboards aren't loading here. Maybe my internet's going out or something like that. But, you know, some guy here has a 105 game. There's Droken. He's uh, in Porpentine. I, there's a lot of d game designers in here. This is a game that's kind of a, a favorite of the other developers, I think. Um... But anyway, I, I've, I've rambled a little bit. Hopefully I've done a half-decent job of explaining why I actually like this game a lot. Super quick, super addictive, uh, predictable. You will make mistakes. It takes a while to get uh, actually even the basic mechanics down. But once you do, it's really, really fun to play. It's super addictive. I can't stress that part enough. But uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's five bucks. It's pretty cheap, all things considered. I don't love the, uh, the visuals. Who cares for the most part? This is still a, a, a really, really fun roguelike ish experience to play don't judge a book by its cover um, the the mechanics here are really solid it's it's a lot of fun in any case thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the episode if you did you can click the like button it helps out a great deal and of course subscribe if you want to see more in the future there will be a link in the video description below as well if you want to pick up 868 hack on steam 565 canadian probably 5 usd in any case thanks for watching and i'll see you next time